Hello and welcome to another episode of Getting to Know Noendo. I'm Lee Raleigh, your host, and today we're going to talk about advanced signal flow. And what does that mean? Well, that means getting signal in, through, and out of Noendo. So let's take a look at how we can do that. We're going to start right at the beginning, right at the basics. Okay. So here we have a brand new session. Okay. With a brand new session, all we have to do is trying to get signal in to Nuendo. To start that, I'm going to go to my studio setup, which is right here under studio. And in any DAW, uh, you will have to connect some kind of uh, audio interface, right? So what we would look at is our audio system. Before we do that, though, uh, there's something that could even connect right before that. When I can add a device, let's say you may be using a small console or a controller that has an audio interface in it. These are some that you can choose where it'll just map everything in Nuendo. Well, that's fantastic, right? Um, I occasionally use a generic remote. When I hit generic remote, I can actually program an iPad to run a lot of the key commands. And as you know, I'm a big fan of key commands and using macros. So this is a great way of actually controlling anything that's getting into the system. So how do we actually get it into the system? Now I've got, um, I can choose on anything that I have connected here. Even this microphone is gonna show up here. I can use this as an audio device, right? But I've chosen to use something called combined devices. Now what is combined device? In the audio MIDI setup, because I'm using a Mac, okay, I decided to chain two uh, interfaces together, okay? By doing that, I've got a lot of inputs and outputs that I can use at my disposal, okay? So that would make this a really, really powerful setup, right? Um, so that's what I've chosen. It's going to tell me my input latency. It's going to tell me my output latency. Um, and then the sample rate and everything else. Now, 64-bit float is, of course, why not? We've been doing this for more than 10 years, right? When using, if the Mac can do it, why not? I'm using uh, my 12-core system. So this allows me to activate multiprocessing and spread the workload over everything, okay? This is pretty much... All we really need to know about the audio system to get this thing going. Okay, right. So let's actually start making some inputs. Fantastic. Right, so that's audio connections. Okay, that's right here. And I'm going to start with hmm, inputs. Why not? Uh, I've got a few things that I'm using today to to demonstrate uh, this uh, for you. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create and add a bus. Now, a bus is not just an internal bus like some of the DAWs may have. This will allow you to set up inputs, outputs. It's a channel, basically. That channel now, I'm going to make a mono signal. And I'm going to call it, let's look at this, mic in. Actually, no, let's call it mic for now. Okay. And right away, it has created a combined device. And it's gone to the first one that's available. Now, I can actually change this in, uh, if I go back to studio setup, uh, what I didn't actually uh, show you was this little area right underneath, which I should have done. Um, right at the top of that, I can determine the samples of my buffer size. But you can see right here, I've got all of my inputs, which are light in, in Nuendo. Uh, inputs are like a pale yellow, and the outputs are a pale blue. So that's a unique identifier that basically allows you to say, okay, I can see this straight away. It's an output or it's an input. All of these are currently inactive apart from that first bus that I just created. Okay. 
Uh, I can change the name of that here. I could say Lee's microphone, right, if I wanted to. But I'm just going to keep it generic, uh, keep it fairly confusing for now. And, um, and that's where we change all the inputs and see all the inputs from my devices that are connected. The control panel, if I'm putting this at a lower buffer size for recording, that's what I want to do. If I'm mixing... Of course, I need to have a higher buffer size. This is something we're all familiar with if we use you know, core audio, for example, or if we're using a PC, same kind of thing. Okay. So, as I said, I can't change that here, but I can determine which device is being used, which input. I'm going to create another bus, and I'm going to call that synth. Okay. Right, actually, I'm going to call it. Here's I can actually double click on this and change the name of it. I'm just going to call this synth in, and I'm going to call this mic in. I should have done that in the first place, but I'm showing you this purposely, right? So I can rename it. I have a method to my madness. Now, this synth that I have here is um, hardwired into my interface. I've got an interface and a rack right here. And my interface happens to be a certain number. Okay. That number is going to be 5 and 6. Okay. 5 and 6 are the inputs. Let me double check to make sure I'm doing this right. Okay. I'm going to go up here to my interface. And yes, it is. It is. Oops. What did I do? I messed it up. It's live. <laughs> Five and six is my input. Now, how do I know this is going to work? Well, okay, let me go ahead and create two tracks. Okay. When I add a track, I'm going to see the inputs right here. These are my default according to my interface and what it was named. But you'll notice right underneath it, these are the ones I've just created in the input tab. Okay, so there's my mic in. The configuration is going to be mono. And I don't have an output bus available to me yet because I haven't created one. I'm going to name that Lee Vox. So that's my voice. I'm going to create another track. And I'm going to make my synth in. That's going to be stereo. No output bus because I haven't created it yet. And I'm going to call that synth. Cool. Let's get these tracks, make them bigger so we can actually see them. I'm going to now uh, command click this guy because this is I like to make my Vox tracks green. If you have watched a previous episode before. And yeah, this synth track, let's make it this color. Okay. For those of you who have watched this me before, you have noticed me using the inspector. So... When I click on this, it's going to show me the input of each one of those tracks. Great. They're already set. But it doesn't have an output bus yet. Okay. Well, let me try something here. I want to see. Uh, I brought another camera with me today, and I've actually got this here. Uh, I'm going to enable my input here. I'm just going to do... Right, so we're probably not hearing it out there in the world, but you can see signal. There it is. Signal is getting into the system, but it's not getting out to you, right, or out to myself. It is through my monitoring system, a default monitoring system on the Apollo, but that's not good, right? I want it to, to hear it properly, and I want to send it out to you. Okay, let's go back and get rid of our synth there. We'll come back to synth later on. Now, let's see. Um, what can we look at here? Input tab, device ports, we've got all of those things. Let's take a look at the output tab, right? So my, out, my inputs are set for now. Oh, well, let's try this microphone. I didn't try it, did I? Okay, so I've got a microphone here. And there we go, one, two, one, two, one, two. We have a signal as well to make sure 
Uh, we're on analog one going in, and that's my my mic over here, which is separate to this mic. Okay, but once again, you're not hearing that. You're seeing the signal, but you're not hearing it. Okay, studio, audio connections. Let's go to outputs. Right. Uh, so let's create some outputs in the same kind of way. Um, best thing for me to do is make it stereo, and I'm going to be really cunning here, and I'm going to be calling it, yes, output. Okay. By default, the window is going to say, okay, I'm taking these first ones. Now, if we stop there and said, okay, let's use that output, there's two definitive monitoring paths in Nuendo, one for the performer and one for the engineer slash producer. The control room functions are going to take care of the engineer and producer and how they distribute the signal. So as it is there, that's okay if we're just going to do a basic session. But let's use the power of Nuendo by using the control room. So what it needs to be, instead of doubling the signal, which it will, uh, I'm not going to connect that. I'm going to leave it as a virtual bus for now. The also, what I need to do is in case that I want to record, uh, say, uh, a software instrument or something, and, and take that MIDI, the output of that instrument, and record it to an audio track, I'm going to call something bounce. That is my internal virtual bus. And with it being a virtual bus, I don't need it to go out of my system. So once again, I'm just going to say not connected. So now I've got two virtual buses in a way. Okay, you have to reprogram your brain a little bit when we're using that output as an input somewhere. Hmm. Okay, next tab. Well, uh, if you watched some earlier episodes, you would have seen me take tracks and route them to a subgroup master or some kind of effects, right? So these things, I can, let's see, say these were a bunch of dialogue tracks, and I wanted to um, send them to a dialogue stem. So I could actually create a group track, process those tracks, all at the same, all those tracks will be processed at the same time, but they'll be muted, they'll be affected by volume, everything else. We know what that is, right? So uh, that group could be added just the same way. The effects tracks are the same thing. The effects tracks, I could add one of Steinberg's uh, amazing plugins here and go and call it, you know, verb, and then that's going to assign itself to this track. There it is, the verb is there. And it's also showing up in the audio connections. And that is routed to the output. Okay, so anything here shows up here, right? So I'm not going to say I don't want a bus here. I'm actually going to get rid of that remove channel, right click, and remove that verb for now. Yes, I do want to remove it. Okay. Now, let's say I've got some hardware gear, right? My hardware gear is now, um, it's in this rack, and it has, it's been hardwired, right, at a certain inputs and outputs, because I want to assign, let's say, a synth, vocals, or whatever it may be, going out to the gear, and then coming back again. So, with that in mind, There'll be a send bus, which is blue, remember, because that's anything that's going out is light blue. Anything that's coming in returning is going to be uh, pale yellow. Okay. So that's what we need. That's handy to do. We just go in there, find the actual hardwired input, find the hardwired output for the return, and we can control delay, monitor delay. We can control actually as a tiny plugin. Uh, inside the inspector, I can actually use that, or in the mix uh, window, I can actually use that external effects plug, excuse me, 
plug in and determine how much signal is getting and coming back. And it's also a MIDI device. It has a MIDI connection to it. Um, the MIDI port uh, I did not show you uh, before. Um, let's see. Let's go back to studio setup real quick. I apologize about that. Right here is my MIDI port setup. So anything that's connected that has the five five pin DIN uh, or the um, or the USB connection, right? I have a USB uh, MIDI interface connected. Everything's active, and this can be changed. The names of these can be changed within the actual application itself. So getting back to that, yes, those are the MIDI devices that I have connected. They're also audio devices. Cool. External instruments. I happen to have a MoXF connected. Well, not connected at the moment, but I can go in there and click and can and actually through the combined devices and connect that. And there's also another delay and return. There's return gain and the MIDI device is listed there as well. So, okay, here we go. Time for a little bit of tea because it's 16 minutes in and everything is going great. Okay, sleeves up. Let's go in. Let's go in and assign our control room, right? Let's see if we're on point here. It looks like it. Excellent. Okay, control room. Now, um, we have the output which is right here, okay? We have speakers, which is a monitor, is a monitor, and then the metering channel, and all these different channels that we can add. This is super duper powerful. I can enable it and disable it by this here. If I disabled it, then I'd rely on my outputs. I do not want to disable it. There's a lot of different ways I can actually view the control room. Right here is open control room. Okay, with that, now the control room is a floating window. It's a resizable window. I could actually put that on a separate monitor and resize that and keep that because that's not only the control room, that's a floating meter as well, which is really handy. The control room is there. It's allowing us to change levels, control levels, control signals getting in and out of this system. Okay. The other way of showing it is by the old fashioned way by showing and hiding. So by show hide, I'm bringing up this window at the top. And now we can actually see it this way. And this is replicated in the mix window. Bear in mind that everything I just created as well on inputs and outputs are listed right here in the mix window, okay? So we have the control room right here. And there's my speakers. And I'm going to say what that is. Okay. My output is transmitted from this. And notice that this has a little speaker icon next to it. If I right-click it, this is currently my main mix, okay? I can remove that as you, as you saw earlier, but that main mix is coming through here and it's still not connected, it's a virtual bus, but it is connected to one of my monitor channels. This monitor channel happens to be going to my Apollo monitor left and monitor right, and they're going to my two speakers here, okay? I can have multiple monitors. Now, why would I ever want that? Well, I'll want that because let's say I was mixing something in surround. Okay. If I was mixing something in surround, then wouldn't it be great if I could utilize the same stereo speakers that I have in my stereo mixes? And wouldn't it be great if I could actually down mix on the fly from surround to stereo just by changing a monitor button? 
Hmm. That'd be fantastic, right? This is our control of the, not the performer side of things, but the engineer producer side of things. Okay. I'm going to right click this. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to add another monitor source. Now, this is showing anything that we've got connected so far. Our output's already a, a source. Our bounds could be a source, but we don't want that. An input could be a source. So I could monitor something coming in that input, but I have a fader for that anyway. So what I'm going to do, I have three more available because you have four of them, even though it says seven. You have three of them available, and I'm going to create a 5.1 path. Okay, so that 5.1 path will allow me to set up six channels in my surround setup. Uh, and I'm going to create my 5.1. But just to let you know, <laughs> these are all the options that you can have. And it keeps going and keeps going and keeps going, right? There's all these different formats that Nuendo supports. Now, we can talk about that in a mixing episode, right? But for now, we're just getting our signal, getting our feet wet. I'm just getting you that, that signal flow so you know how to set these things up so you can go off on your own and do things, right? So now I'm going to set 5.1. Now, notice that um, Nuendo uses the SIMT ITU path, which is the left, right, center, le LFE, left surround, and right surround. Okay? And that is excellent with me. It's not connected because what I need to do is connect it to my combined devices. As if by magic, it's going to create um, six automatically it's going to take the first six inputs well hold on a second we wanted the surround system to also utilize the same left and right speakers right yes so my left should really be monitor l my right should really be monitor r and then i can configure these as i want Okay, hardwire them, make sure everything's connected to my speakers correctly and start panning things around and using the LFE, right? This is a mix thing. For now, let's set it up. Now, this in an ideal world would be what we want. But you can actually tell Nuendo that you don't want to cross paths. You don't want to use the same output uh, more than once. And it's definitely the case when we're talking about inputs, because when something's hardwired, it really shouldn't be using the same input, right? Excuse me. So what I need to do then in that case, I would go to my Nuendo preferences, okay? And I would checkbox this. Exclusive device ports for monitor channels. Okay, let's see what happens. When we check on that, I'm going to hit OK. And I say, Lee, well, look, you've made a mess of it. I keep hitting my other microphone here. Forgive me. And um, right now, it's all set to that. Well, that's how it was set before. Let me take that off and put it back again and go to choose. Aha. Now, we try to choose monitor L, and it says, hold on a second. That device is being used exclusively for something else. So in this case, we've told Nuendo we just want to have one output or one input, whatever it may be, and don't use it for anything else. But in a surround system, down mixing down to a stereo system, we need that checkbox off. I'm going to cancel that. Okay. I'm going to go back. And I'm going to go back to this preference. And this is what we want, right? We want this currently to go and utilize that. Now, for those eagle eyes of you, you've probably been looking to the right-hand side of the screen and say, well, okay, you haven't really showed us anything in the control room yet. Yes, give me time. 
those are the speakers, right? At any given time, if I click on that, now I'm going to be monitoring in 5.1, okay? Um, if I click on this, now I'm going to go to my left and right channels. Any tracks that are outputted to those speakers or to the output, one, two, uh, will go there. Now, one thing I didn't do is what I should have done is gone back and created uh, a 5.1 physical output as well in here and, and made it not connected, okay? That would have completed the signal because when I create a track, the output is determinable by this. If I go to output here, there's my synth again. Let's bring my old synth back again. Ah, yes, love playing the bum notes. So you've got the signal, and it's going out of my speakers, and you're finally hearing it. Excellent. Okay, and we'll try that with a microphone, just to make sure that I've been hitting all this time. Do we have an output? There it is. Sorry, I forgot to do this earlier, because, you know, things happen. One, two, one, two, there we go, buckle my shoe. Fantastic. So let's get back to that again. So I would need a 5.1 output for that to work properly. But for showing you this, you get that, right? Not only that is my down mix presets here. Uh, I can actually down mix to stereo or mono, okay? So I'm gonna take that 5.1 mix, I can go in there, I can go to my down mix and determine, uh, there's an actually a plugin, a built-in plugin that will allow you to set up your own, you can set up your own uh, inputs, et cetera, et cetera, and, and, and gains and you can actually put your own uh, low pass filter in and all this good stuff and it'll do down mixing for you, right? So I can have 5.1 speakers. Now these are available down here and guess what? You know me by now that I can actually change these with a, a key command, right? Or my iPad or anything that I have connected. It's currently showing that the down mix uh, preset is now set to stereo. It could be set to mono, it could be set to whatever you need it to be. Right? Click on that, it should actually change to mono. I have to set mono up. Right, um, right, what is the next thing that we can see? Right, okay, cool. Moving along. I'm gonna delete that. Actually, you know what, I'm just gonna leave it there. Okay. Uh, the next thing I wanna talk about is the headphone. There's only one headphone output. And now, well, you're saying, well, yeah, I've got a headphone. I've got two headphones on my interface. Well, big deal. But this is a separate headphones. If you just wanted this to be a separate output to headphones, why not? Okay. Uh, this can be enabled and be disabled. Uh, this is the mix that it's showing. This is my physical mix level that I can do, individual mix level, as opposed to the output of the control room. And then I can just type that in, right, and put, put it back to Unity. Uh, I can actually activate a metronome click that goes to that. So this is kind of handy, right? That's getting signal out of the system, and then you can determine where you want that to be connected. Okay, I'm just gonna right click that and remove the phones. Yes, I do, I want to remove the phones. Um, let's see, ah, yes, near and dear to my heart. Now, last episode, we talked about, uh, we talked about something near and dear to my heart, which was ADR and then ADR panel. And do you remember how many Q sends there were? Four, right, four Q sends. Uh, four are available, so let's just add one. And this could be named drummer, it could be named uh, producer, it could be named talent, 
what we're going to do is name it talent. And we're going to make it a stereo signal. It could be a mono signal, whichever, right? But let's make it a stereo signal. I've clicked on OK. There is my talent. It's I, I think it's kind of, I have a little chuckle when I see the little star next to it. But uh, I think that's somebody's sense of humor. Uh, it, it works for me. So, of course, I can assign that to, let's say, 7 and 8. There we go. And that's hardwired into the next room. So that my cue, my talent is going to hear what I'm going to send them. Okay. Let's take a look up here. Right inside here, it's now created a cue scent. Excellent. Let me just take a drink of water here. It's about... What is it in Florida right now? It is about 76 degrees, 8 o'clock at night. Yeah. Okay. The talent is currently listening to the cues. Well, there's no cues set up, right? Here's this producer or performer side of things again, right? They can listen to just the mix. Whatever mix we have on the mix, they're going to listen to. And that's whatever's going through the output or your main mix is going to them with that source uh, enabled. Of course, that's also enabling a key that you can do or on the iPad. Um, there we go. We have cues. I'll set those up in a second. We have right here. Well, just to show you, let's say, let's see this. And I'm going to enable my synth. Right, excellent. So that shows you that if I click on cues, there we go. The signal's not getting there because it needs to go through a cue. So if I took this track and I don't have any cues enabled right now. Here's my routing. These are, this is my mic in, this is my synth in, this is my outputs, right? Which are going to the speakers, used in the control room. Um, what I need to do is go to my racks here and enable cue sense. Yes. So those cue sense, there's my talent, there's my cue setup. Uh, I can enable, yeah, so inactivate, deactivate them, pre-post send. Uh, I can temporarily bypass them, all right? Uh, so if I had this on, my synth, right? Now you're seeing the signal going through the queue. There you go. That is my signal. Cool. That is the overall queue level, the queue master. Let's say you don't have uh, a headphone box in the uh, the talent's room, right, in the booth. Uh, you can use that to determine what signal they're getting. That's the master fader or the master uh, of the Q bus. Okay. Here is a talkback, which I'm going to talk about in a second in the talkback level. But let's say this is your drummer friend and the drummer wants a click track. Okay, the drummer will have a click track. And remember, there's four separate assignable cues. So whoever wants a click track can get it. Okay, the click track can also, that's the click level that's right underneath it. And the pans, let's say they just want to hear it in the left ear. That's simple. I'm just going to stick that in the left ear, right? Command clicking in Nuendo. Uh, defaults, puts everything back to default again. So that's my levels, command click. There we go. Cool. Excellent. Um, when I'm recording my friend uh, Ben Connolly in the Foley booth, I normally use, he doesn't use headphones. So I normally put a small speaker up for him so I can talk to him and say, hey, let's do this take again. Um, how do I communicate? Well, I communicate through the cue. He doesn't need to hear the cue all the time. So I have a quick key uh, set up for this. You see the activation button? I got one as my quick key. So I'm going to go through and deactivate that speaker. I don't want anything going through that speaker unless I'm ready to speak to him. Okay. 
This is the same of the top back. Before we get to the top back, real quickly, just have a look down here. And we have our inserts. Any one of these, any one of these monitors, uh, uh, the uh, QSENS, anything that's in this control room can now have a plugin be instantiated on there. So I can go in there and basically put a compressor in there or an EQ or anything like that. That's kind of cool. Okay. What else do we need to look at here? We need to look at, oh yeah, okay, real quick. Um, let's turn my synth off here. I don't want to accidentally play you something. If I right click on this, of course I can deactivate it, but I can also, hmm, we've only got two tracks here, but I can change the QSend levels. And let's say we have a decent, here's that performer thing versus control room thing again two monitor paths here um i can relatively change all the q sends going to q1 by adjusting this and it'll adjust all of them down relatively well okay that's a bit of finite control well you know what i can do that here as well with the master but that gives you that control if you want if you take away relative mode, you're going to actually say what that level will be, and it'll adjust the level accordingly. Cool. I can also copy and use the current mix levels and copy those to the cues. I can use the same pan settings. I can enable or disable the cue sense here. You can do that in the mix window as well. I can just reset them. Okay. Excellent. Where are we at? External input. Awesome. I'm looking up. I don't see any questions. Still with you. Excellent. Thanks, Bart. Um, glad you are. <laughs> so here we are. Uh, yeah, I think we'll talk about, you know what? I forgot to talk about the talk back. That's what happens when you get all excited. The talk back. Wow, that's fantastic. You can have four separate talk backs. Okay, to talk to your talent. Great. I'm going to add that channel. I'm going to add a talk back. And what I'm going to do is change this input, right, from here, from my mic. So I'm going to lose that mic now, just to prove that point. Uh, there we go. One, two, one, two, one, two. You can't see anything, right? You can't see anything come in there. So I've lost that now. It's not in mic in the mic in bus is there but the actual interface has been swapped and now i'm going to use control room talk back combine combine devices and there's my talk back right when i notice right down here that that's uh available one two one two one two there is my talk back and it's going to my just to my talent it's not coming to you it's not going out of the mix or is it no it's going through straight talk back is a talk back if i turn it off you will not see it right i've still got this i actually have a, a microphone that is in a podium mic which i could switch on and off anyway as a talk back but I've got this open now. Now, why would I ever want to do that? Well, if a talent's not doing too well, I don't really want to say anything <laughs> with the talk back on. So <laughs> I have to make sure that the talk back is on or off. Cool. There's my signal. That's the talk back. Now, there's a preference with the talk back that I actually, I've got a quick key as well. Talk back on and off. Of course, you know I have. There it is. It's going green. It's not. Uh, that is the forward slash, right? And it leans forward. Or does it lean back? I think it's the forward slash. Yeah. Uh, that's how I have it set. So I go between forward slash and speaker one, forward slash speaker one, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, the talk back uh, auto disable. Let's say you don't want to... Uh, you can have a dim during 
talk back as well so that it dims the cue. So if you're talking to the talent, it's allowing me to cut through. As soon as I take the talk back off, it goes back up to normal volume again. There's a auto disable, which is on auto disable right now. It's on no auto disable. I can put talk back on whenever I want. Uh, do I want it only uh, to disable in record or in play in record? So it automatically disables. So I don't even have to switch it off. Okay. There you go. That's there's some pretty cool um, options there as well. Right. Only a couple of things left now. And um, let's take a look. Still here. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Jean-Marie. Um, let's go to external input. So let's say our talent's kind of setting up. They're getting the, the cues together or they're getting the dialogue together. Excuse me. Hmm. green tea. Let's say they're getting everything together and they need to hear some music. You can actually route um, an interior. What I used to do is I run a Dante system as well, a switchable Dante system. And I can actually run music from my laptop and send it through Nuendo and out to the talent. Now, if I had a CD player, you remember those, uh, if I had a CD player, I could actually use this as an external input. Okay, let's call that CD or music or whatever. And now we're going to click OK. And then we're going to assign that through one of the inputs. Excuse me. Or a couple of the inputs, right? Because it's stereo. Now, hmm. notice how I've got an extra source button. So if I can click on that while I'm setting up and while the talent's setting up, that means that they can be listening to my CD, right? And they're enjoying that. And whatever level I can give them is they're in the queue level, right? When we're ready to rock and roll, I can either go to the mix or I could go to my cues. But that is available here. And I can listen to that, right? Notice that my talent is listening to the CD player, but I'm listening to the mix. Cool, right? I can also listen and chill with my Enya CD or whoever it may be. Um, but then I can switch these around. That's kind of cool, right? Uh, let's see. Right. Monitor source. Okay. Right. Let's say we're doing some audio post production. And let's say we're doing, you know, we're doing some editing and we're just kind of right ready to mix some stuff. And uh, we have a dialogue stem, we have a sound effect stem, and we have a music stem. Okay. What I would normally do is for, I can monitor through that. I would go to my outputs and I'd add my, let's say, uh, dialogue stem. Okay. There's my dialogue stem. Of course, this is virtual because it's a virtual bus again. So I'm not sending it out of my system. So therefore, guess what? We're going to put not connected. Right. When I go back to control room, I want that. Uh, to be my monitor here, inputs, outputs. There's my dialogue stem. Hmm. That's cool, right? So it's not just for physical, okay? Physical, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> physical monitors. It's virtual monitors as well. So notice right up here in the control room that I have a dialogue stem button there now. Guess what happens when I click on that? I'm going to instantly hear my dialogue stem and my dialogue stem only. If I had a dialogue stem, music stem, and music stem, 
then I could switch between all of them or I could switch and listen to all of them together because it's all going to my output. I can actually have, if I click on the button at the top, I can extensiate multiple sources. Okay, there could be a time when that what's needed. That is super cool, right? That is very, very cool uh, and powerful uh, thing about Nuendo that you can actually go through. And of course, guess what? You can use a, a key command for that as well to, to go through your sources. Excellent. Uh, oh, yeah, that's one thing here. Just wrapping it up. We're at 45 minutes now. And um, what I want to do is I want to say, okay, what is my main mix? Uh, it can't change that here in the control room, but because these are outputs, technically, right? I can go into the output. Now, this speaker icon next to it means that it is the main mix. If I wanted the dialogue stem to be the main mix, I could set it as the main mix, okay? By right-clicking it and setting that as the main mix. Cool? That's one thing that we could do there. Right, a couple more things. Metering channel. The metering channel, if you have a Dora or something else, like a, um, a physical hardware meter, this will allow you to connect that and it will uh, mimic the, the metering. Excellent. So you can do that and connect it there. Right. Real briefly, we just got three buttons to talk about. Okay. This I've already done, but this makes complete sense now that we've wired all this stuff together. Um, I'm playing this again. Right. Now, this output right that is like a, a a controller knob right this is almost I do have my own monitor controller here as well some of you may have that there's nothing more infuriating on an audio interface that you don't have control over your entire speakers or your entire audio interface especially when you've got two audio interfaces connected through this combined devices, this will take care of everything, anything that you've got connected and monitoring. If you need to dim it, right, the dim signal is going to come in, and that is set to whatever your dim is. I think it was currently I had it set to negative 30, I think. So it drops it down uh, 30 dB, right, to dim. The reference level is that if I click that, you see it's going to negative 20. If I click that again, it's going to go back to what it was. So this is kind of a handy thing. I, when I turned that down, I was still hearing it here over my speakers because of my monitoring through the, uh, my interface. But going out to you, that was turning down, right? Okay. I believe that we have reached the end of the road, okay? I'm going to look up. I'm going to give it a couple of seconds here. I know there's a 30-second delay, but I didn't have any questions so far. Wonderful info. You are very, very welcome. Um, it's always a pleasure to, to share these little things with Nuendo with you. Uh, because you get to know this stuff. This is not something that you would just pick up anywhere, right? These are very, very specialized things. And it's nothing too sexy, as I would say, but it's very vital information to get signal in and out using your interface, connecting it correctly. And then we're going to talk about getting MIDI in one day, right? We're going to talk about composition. We're going to talk about all this other stuff and mixing another day. And I hope you come back and join me then. You're very welcome. And uh, I'm going to hit my little thank you button here. And it's thank you for watching. And I hope to see you next time when we talk about some more audio post-production workflows. Have a great one.